No C programming tutorial would be complete without a history of C. C was really born out of Unix, or out of the intersection between Unix and Multics back in the 70s. So Ken Thompson developed BPC BPCL and B, and these languages were used on the Multics project. Now there were a couple of issues they had with that, is one is that B was actually interpreted, they were using it in, in an interpreted way, which means there's another program running which interprets the B code and then that's translated to machine code and executed. This incurs a slowdown. Because of that, they wanted to you know, move to something a bit quicker. Another thing was that B was typeless. There's no types in B. What this means is, it means that it can't take advantage of architecture-specific um, support for numbers or characters and things like that. On the PDP-7 this wasn't a problem, but they wanted to port Unix to the PDP-11 and so the type, type they wanted to take advantage of byte addressing which was available on the PDP-11, so they wanted a typed system. They also, because they'd written Unix in assembly on the PDP-7, what they wanted to do was port Unix to other operating systems and make it portable. So they wanted to rewrite it in something that was a bit more portable. So for that reason, C was developed. So C was born out of B and born out of the early days of Unix and had portability in mind. So that was Ken Thompson along with Dennis Ritchie. And you could say that C was probably born around 1972. At this point, C wasn't really very well specified. There wasn't a spec. There was no official spec at that point. So, but in 1978, Brian Kernighan and Dennis Ritchie wrote a book called The C Programming Language. And this was kind of the first spec for C. And because at the time, when they wrote the compiler for C, they, it was very closely integrated with the libraries. And the libraries, the standard libraries, tended to be bundled with the compiler, you know, for basic input and output, reading and writing files, that kind of thing. So the spec almost became not just the language, because the language itself is actually quite simple. You could probably fit it on a couple of pages of A4, you know, just the actual the limitations of the number of types and the syntax and things like that. But the language as a whole, including the libraries, is much more complicated. And that kind of set the stage. So that in 1989, C was finally standardized for the first time. And this was kind of prompted by the book. It was inspired by the book. So the ANSI C standard, the first one, C89, was created. And this standardized not only the language functions, but the behavior of the libraries as well, that are typically associated with what's called the C standard libraries. Also born around this time was POSIX. POSIX is a standard for interoperating inter system interoperability, <laughs> interoperating system compatibil compatibility for system libraries and basic system functions. And because C was being ported to different systems, this kind of they realised that they needed different ways, or they needed to homogenise or harmonise system functions across these platforms if a portable language was going to work. But POSIX is outside of the scope of C, but I just thought I'd mention it because it's interesting. In 1990, the International Standards Organization also decided to standardize C. <laughs> Their spec was functionally almost identical to the C89 ANSI standard. So it's a little bit strange, but they made some minor alterations, errata and so on, and some slight modifications, but essentially they're equivalent standards. But at this point, there was now a good standardization of C, and this really helped to spread C about, because it could be implemented everywhere, and the same behavior could be expected whether you were compiling on a Multic system, on a VMS system, or on a Unix system. Standards bodies like to evolve things, and languages like to evolve. 
So the ISO standards carried on. In 1990 there was another revision which added wide character support. In 1999, C99 was standardised, and this added some quite interesting features. One was that you could have variable declarations inside for loops. Um, you'll see that later on. Um, a couple of other things, one line comments, and before that, before C99, you actually had to declare all of your variables in a block before any of your code. So they had to be separated out, Where now, which is probably a reasonably good practice, but now you can intersperse it, which is often more readable. So that was C99. The last ISO standard to come out was in 2011. So that's now C11. And this added threading and some other things, but none of this is really that important. It's just worth knowing about. So when you see these standards talked about, you know what you're saying. What we're going to use is C, well, we're going to use C11 because our compilers will support that, but we're not going to be using really most of the C11 extra features, that about wraps it up for a history. Just a final note, to kind of, I guess, to motivate you as to why you'd want to learn C. I mean, isn't it some old language that's, you know, archaic? Well, most of the modern internet is built on C. In fact, almost every program of significance is written in C. Uh, Unix, Linux, most of Windows as well, uh, Postfix, um, N Nginx, Apache, the, all the DNS servers, it's all written in C. So everything is written in C. All of the systems architecture is written in C. Okay, other programs have been uh, written on top of them, uh, but most of them were compiled. Most of the, the interpreters and most of the compilers for other languages were written in C as well. So C underlies almost everything. Also, it doesn't really matter which programming language you learn first. They're all pretty similar. They're not like languages like Chinese, Hungarian, Russian, Japanese, English, and German, you know, which can be very different. If you think of, I don't know, Korean and um, French, you know, they're very different. Their programming languages are all quite similar. And once you can program in one, if you look at another language, probably it will look the same because a lot of programming languages have been inspired by C syntax. But also, once you actually are familiar with what programming is, you'll realize that there's only so many things you can do. You can loop, you can repeat things, you can call functions, and each programming language will have its way to do these things. But minus a few kind of exceptions that are a bit out there, they're all pretty much the same. So I think that's just about enough of me talking. Let's go on and write our first program.